Good afternoon. Uh, my name is John Layton. I'm an assistant superintendent of the Lafayette School Corporation in Lafayette, Indiana. We're about two hours south of Chicago. Um, a school corporation, uh, Indiana uses a quirky term, corporation. It's a school district, K through 12. We uh, are public schools. We have about 7,000 students. We're considered to be an urban school with high poverty. Um, I was interviewed uh, by local media about three or four weeks ago, and I concluded the interview by saying something like, I'm just a guy uh, practicing cultural diplomacy in my little corner of the world. And about three days later, I got an email from Jay asking uh, to come out here and speak. And I thought, wow, I ought to say, I ought to say smart things like that more often, you know? <laughs> I had nothing to do with Thank you, Jay, for inviting us. Uh, I, I just thought I'd, I'd tell our story from a uh, practitioner's point of view, from the, the grassroots, uh, the school, school point of view. and. Uh, uh, tell you what we've done over the years. The program uh, Genesis began uh, in 2005. I was actually a principal of our middle school in our district, 1,100 students, and my media specialist uh, was uh, Sue Jones, and this is a picture of Sue Jones here. And Sue had a great passion for uh, Asian studies, and uh, she came to me one day to my office and she said, uh, Leighton, uh, we're gonna go to China. And uh, after we get back from China, we're gonna start a language program and a culture program, and, and our kids need to be exposed to China because things are happening in China. And I kind of looked at her, and I said, Jonesy, I'm not going to China, all right? <laughs> I don't have time, I gotta run this school, I got two little kids at home. But we, uh, we sparred back and forth over the next few months, and eventually, yes, I did get on that plane, and in March of 2006, we joined 30 other educator, educational leaders from Indiana and we traveled to China on a Freeman Foundation uh, funded trip. Uh, we visited Dalian and uh, Beijing and we got to go visit schools and I will tell you that I was absolutely blown away. My perceptions of China changed greatly and uh, I came uh, home with a, a very strong desire to get the language program started for our kids. Um, didn't know where to start but I knew that I had Purdue University right there in my uh, hometown. And so uh, being a Purdue grad, I went over and started knocking on doors and uh, finally found uh, uh, Wei, uh, Dr. Wei Hong, who's here. Wave your hand, Wei. So it is. And uh, Wei uh, reached into her drawer and she pulled out an application for a Hanban guest teacher. And uh, so I had my eyes open that day and we wouldn't have had the program um, started without Wei. But we also wouldn't have had it without Sue. And before I move on in the presentation, this picture was taken about two minutes um, uh, before an accident. Uh, this was just outside the Forbidden City on that trip in March of 2006 and about two minutes later, Sue fell. And she broke her shoulder and had to be transported back to the United States for emergency surgery. Uh, during that surgery and the aftercare, she was diagnosed with leukemia, and about six months later, she passed. So Sue never did see uh, the results of this program. She never got to see the fruits of her vision. But I do not talk about our program without mentioning Sue. Okay. Where we are today, we have 200, over 200 students learning the language, K through 12. Again, we're a high poverty district. Uh, K through 12, 200 students. Uh, daily Mandarin language instruction, we have uh, one full-time teacher that we've been able to hire and put under contract with our district. We also have guest teachers, primarily through the uh, Hanban, but we've also uh, used guest teacher programs uh, outside of the Hanban as well. We have a guest teacher that's assigned to our school district from our partner school. We have achieved Confucius classroom status and we have ongoing cultural experiences for students. Uh, and students that are outside the district as well, and I'll explain those in a little bit. We also have two thriving uh, school partnerships. One is the affiliated high school of Shanghai Zhao Tong University. Purdue is a partner with uh, Zhao Tong, uh, and we partner with the high school affiliated with Zhao Tong University. And we also have a partnership out in Hangzhou, uh, Shenzhen Experimental Primary School, so we have an elementary school partner as well. And we have a great partnership with Purdue University and the Confucius Institute. Without their support uh, and without their guidance, uh, we would not be where we are today with our program. This is Yi Soon. She's our extraordinary lead teacher. Uh, she was actually the very first guest teacher that we ever had through Hanban, and she returned back to China 
and um, eventually uh, was able to get an H-1B work visa um, and uh, return to us and we put her under contract. But she has written curriculum. Uh, she understands the two-way street of soft power and uh, she's done a great job for our students and, and for our community. Why Mandarin? I get asked that question all the time. Well, obviously, you know, I, I'm preaching to the choir here today, I think, but 1.5 billion people are speaking Chinese uh, worldwide. Uh, that gets your attention right there. Uh, something that we should be considering. Uh, China's economic emergence uh, is well documented, and that, that demands our attention. They're a, a big trade partner with the United States. I think, uh, just as has been mentioned by other speakers, I think extraordinary opportunities do await students who gain command of the language. So um, students who major in business or engineering and minor in, in uh, Mandarin uh, are gonna have doors open that we've never, uh, never seen open before in the United States. The United States government also lists Mandarin Chinese as a critical uh, language to national security and I also think and this is the old social studies history teacher coming out in me but I think this is there's some historical support for this uh, if you think uh, about at least partially if you think about why French and uh, Russian and German uh, took a foothold in American schools and in the curriculum I think you, at least partially you have to look at post-World War II and the rebuilding of, of Europe and the markets that were created, the trade that began to occur between the United States and those markets made it important to, to offer those languages. In about 1990, a Japanese automobile plant came to Lafayette and we put Japanese in and it's a thriving language in our district as well. And um, with the emerging um, markets with China, we've added Mandarin. Criticisms, this, we'll call this the John Stewart screen, uh, but uh, this is real, that was a joke, I guess. Uh, the YouTube video is kind of a joke, but it's actually quite real. We, we actually deal with these criticisms. I, I would probably wager that almost every public school who's uh, done uh, the sort of thing that we've done has faced these questions. So why are you promoting the language and culture of a communist nation? Chinese learning materials that are being provided must be propaganda. Uh, will you be able, to, uh, if you add Mandarin, are you going to drop the language I teach or to, to pay for it? You know, all these are legitimate questions, but I think this fourth bullet point is the biggie to me. And that is, will you be able to provide a qualified teacher for our students? And right now, folks, in the United States, the answer is uh, no, it's not happening. All right, not on, not on the type of scale that we need. There are not qualified teachers, not enough qualified teachers coming out to uh, satisfy the demand. When we first started considering the Chinese program, there were about 20,000 students in the United States learning uh, Mandarin Chinese. I would wager that that's 10 times that or 20 times that today in just uh, seven or eight short years. So uh, that is a big issue is, is coming up with qualified teachers. And what do we do? We turn to guest teacher programs. Well, to get the language started, again, Purdue University was a big help, but we also attended the National Chinese Language Conference uh, since its inception. Uh, we visited successful schools. Chicago Public Schools became a, sort of a model for us. Uh, being a, a high poverty district ourselves, we went to CPS, and uh, they had a great program going on at that time. And uh, also visited public schools out in Washington, D.C., took the best of what we saw and brought it back to our district. Pathways, uh, we've used the College Board Hanban program, and we've also used the American Councils for Teachers of Critical Foreign Languages. That's a U.S. State Department program. That is generally a one and done grant. So you apply for that grant, they give you a guest teacher for a year, and then that's it. It's kind of a seed, seed your program. We actually won that grant twice though, so felt pretty good about that. And uh, we continue to work with, uh, with Hanban on guest teachers. Okay, there are some uh, great advantages to, Han to the Hanban and then there are some challenges. Uh, first of all, we have found that the teacher quality is outstanding. It's a very competitive process. A lot of training goes in uh, to the teachers before they come out to the field. I think they spend about a month here in Los Angeles before they, they come out to the field uh, in addition to training that they're getting in, in Beijing. And our, our uh, contracted teacher, Sun Yi, who you saw a picture of uh, earlier, uh, she is one of the trainers. She goes to Beijing and, and uh, tr helps train the, the uh, Hanban teachers. Uh, the application process is simple. The grant helps to lower cost. Uh, programs are re renewable as long as you're doing your job. 
uh, lots of learning materials, and uh, then it opens up the, the world of Confucius classrooms. There are challenges. It's not free. You do have to, you have to commit some financial resources to it. It's a subsidized guest teacher program. And then this is key, I think. There's logistical support. You don't just pick up your guest teacher at the airport and drop them off at their apartment or their uh, host family and then see you at school. Tremendous uh, logistical support. We have to arrange for housing, arrange for transportation, help with communication. We have to teach them how to be good consumers and how to purchase groceries in the United States. We, not, and not to get taken advantage of. Uh, we help them file tax forms, work with utility companies, you name it. Uh, we do a, a lot of stuff. And they uh, limited to 20 contact hours a week with students. Uh, typical um, K through 12 educator in the United States is about 35 hours. So. Uh, they don't get to work quite as much as, as we would like. We were awarded Confucius Classroom status in 2010, and uh, these are just pictures of some of the projects that we do. Um, we identify five or six, up to ten projects a year to accomplish. Uh, we, we create budgets, we, we make annual reports, but it, it has been a tremendous way to enrich our program. Some of the things that we've done, we, we host Chinese delegations, we have uh, we bring, bring performances in. We, we uh, partner with the Confucius Institute at Purdue to help us with this. Uh, we've had uh, musicians come over from Hangzhou. We've had Wuman uh, perform at our school, and, and uh, she did a live performance in front of fifth and sixth grade students, but we broadcast it on internal TV to 7,000 students, so that was pretty cool. We do 90-minute field trip experiences, so teachers from around the district can bring their classes into the Confucius classroom for a 90-minute culture and language experience. Ongoing professional development and our annual China Night, which is coming up on March 18th, if you're in the neighborhood of Indiana, stop on in. Uh, that'll draw about 500 people that night. Tremendous support from the Purdue CI for that. Again, some pictures. School partnerships, I'm going to go real fast here, but uh, we, we've been able to establish two. It takes a lot of work, takes a lot of personalization, a lot of trips, a lot of gift giving. Uh, but uh, once, you, once you get school partnerships going, man, that's a great thing for us. Um, uh, here are pictures of the Hangzhou, brought 50 students over recently to visit one of our elementary schools. And the students spent a week in the homes of our students, spending the night and uh, enjoying our culture. And then there's uh, some of our students had gone back over there and visited them. At the high school level, it's primarily teacher professional development. So we just had, just a, a week or two ago, we had teachers from Shanghai Jiaotong in, in our high school um, visiting and uh, attending classes. Soft power, we've been aware for, <laughs> since the inception that there was an agenda on the part of the Chinese, but we embraced it. We thought, ah, that's a good idea, actually, you know? Uh, that's going to promote peace and prosperity amongst the, the two nations. And so we see that as a two-way street. When we have students visit our schools, when we have teachers visit our schools, when we have guest teachers visit for a year, we wrap a tremendous amount of support and love uh, around them. And um, when they go back home, I think they go back with a different perception of America as well. Okay, and uh, so we see it as a two-way street, and uh, like I said earlier, I'm just a guy uh, practicing cultural diplomacy in a little small part of the world. I love talking about my program, so if anybody wants to talk, give me a call. I'm on all kinds of social media. Give me a call. Come visit us, and uh, we'll share every, uh, anything that we can about our program. Thank you.